Hello everyone. This video is about uh, how to replace your uh, fuel rail and uh, fuel pressure sensor on a Ford Territory uh, SZ model. Uh, that's a diesel one. So the first step is to remove this left hand EGR uh, GR pipe. So on the left you have the click R type V band. So to remove it you can either use the click R tool or just pop up uh, or pop it up using a flat hand uh, screwdriver. So once it is uh, off you can just uh, uh, move it back and put it on the left or right. Here there's another screw you will need to remove this screw and uh, there are two screws at the bottom which I've already removed on the pipe. So be careful there is a gasket uh, behind that uh, between these two screws so once you remove it the basket, gasket will fall off so try to catch it. So now it is off. Now we have access and clearance to remove the plug to the fuel rail pressure sensor. So usually these pressure sensors uh, there is a special glue with which uh, they are attached to the rail so it's recommended that when you are replacing a fuel pressure sensor you have to replace it as a component as a whole uh, as a whole package the fuel rail itself and uh, the fuel pressure sensor so i got a used one here which i have from a junkyard so um, hopefully it should do the trick i tried using a separate uh, i tried using putting a separate uh, fuel pressure sensor in but it started leaking and uh, i did not have any glue or anything uh, any kind of thread locker that can actually stop the fuel leakage from here so now that we have this one uh, to get more clearance we have to remove this ecu uh, to remove the ecu there are one two and three uh, screws over here four in fact two here and two over there and then we can start with removing this one and this one and this, this one uh, there's a there's a uh, there's a clip over here which you can press to release it and then you can just push it backwards uh, to release the hole. So I'll just uh, get back after removing all these things. Uh, I've removed the ECU now and uh, I have pretty good clearance uh, to put my tools in but I think ideally I should remove this uh, cable too. So there's only one screw here. So remove that one and you can put your uh, this whole cabling uh, onto the left and this will give you pretty good clearance. Now I've removed the screw. I can move the cable but still it is uh, attached to here so there is a tape over here which you can press and then pull it out and then you can just pretty much uh, move the whole thing wherever you want so now i'll just put it onto the right instead of putting on the left so now i have a good clearance to access my uh, fuel rail area so now uh, there are one two three uh, three nuts over here that I have to loosen with using I think I will use uh, that uh, crowbar type of wrench and then there is one over here so this is the main inlet one so once I've removed all these three then I will move on to the two nuts that are holding it to the body so one of them is this one and the second one is this one I might have to loosen uh, the dipstick so the dipstick screw, there are two dipstick screws one is this one and one is this one so just loosen it a bit so that uh, uh, there is enough room to wiggle it out uh, this thing so now i've removed uh, all these nuts and loosened them uh, i tried using this one the crowfoot one this one but uh, it was really difficult to put in and get some space in there so i'd rather work with the straight wrench this one so yeah uh, the straight edge worked fine for me usually it slips but this time it held on so once you are done with it just pull them to the top so that uh, they don't get into when you when you're trying to remove it so now i've removed all bolts so i've loosened this one too uh, the bottom bolt of this dipstick is really hard to reach and you need a special flexed uh, flexed head uh, uh, wrench for this one but if you don't have this one then yeah don't just don't just ignore this one because you if you just remove the or loosen the top bolt you'll still get enough slack to, to move it back and forward and there's not much active components attached to it so it shouldn't be an issue so all we need to do is that uh, uh, try to uh, wiggle it move it forward and backwards be careful with these lines call these lines if you want to reuse them if you damage the ends of the engine, then probably uh, the diesel will start leaking from it once the engine starts. So you just want to be careful. Uh, take them out of these two both plastic clips while you're trying to wiggle it out. 
and carefully remove it out. It should come all the way from the from the left from this way. It was easy to take it out. All I had to do was uh, pull it uh, a bit from the left. So uh, I slightly pulled it and uh, it um, uh, loosened from the seat that it was in here. It was it stuck a bit here, but I just have to give it a, a bit of gentle pull and that was it. It just started coming out. Come on, it started came, coming out. So now I have to put it, uh, put the new one in. So replace, not a new one, but a replacement one. So uh, I'll follow the same way. I'll just push it in and uh, put it in its seat so one thing that you need to be careful about is when that when you put it back in it may not seat properly so you have to uh, the legs here you have to slide to tap them in so uh, i'll show you it in a while so it's now halfway in the way i wanted yeah uh, there's an important step in there which i wanted to show so that's why i just stopped in there so once you start putting them back now note that this one's open this one's just barely touching it and this one's properly in all right this one's properly in and that one too so when you start putting it back just make sure that this one goes in these two goes in first at the same time so one uh, these two are seated then you can slightly wiggle them and make sure this one goes in and then uh, make sure this one goes in while the rest of them are still in position in the meanwhile try to put this thing on which i've uh, this one is already in and uh, once i'm seating this one i'll put this clip on so before i started tight start tightening these uh, four bolts on top i would like i would make sure that these things are properly in there if they are not uh, i'm looking at a fuel leakage yeah now it's properly seated so uh, i made sure that all of these things will go in so once they were in uh, these things were still popping it uh, popping out a bit so i had this uh, chisel with me uh, i had this chisel and this hammer so i uh, put this chisel on uh, on this one and then on this one and give it a few taps over here and over here on these two nut positions so after a few taps gentle taps it will go in uh, nicely so once they are in now i can put the nets on and before i do that i would also like to wiggle all these uh, few lines a bit so that if they are not seated again the wiggle should give them enough room to go in properly on their own so now i'm sure that uh, they're properly seated so i'll just go ahead tighten all these bolts and uh, this one and that one and each and everything up and put this thing back on so yeah i've uh, put everything back now uh, last uh, last couple of words on uh, removing this item so if you still have any trouble accessing to these uh, bolts over there in this area you might want to go ahead and remove the fuel filter this will give you some additional clearance to reach the uh, bolt at the back. So yeah, uh, apart from that, uh, shouldn't be an issue. So now I've uh, talked, talked everything properly. And uh, yeah, let's see if it works.